Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and if you're a regular channel, you already no doubt know about Unreal Engine 5, which is currently available in early access. We've had some really nice high-end demonstrations showcasing the graphical fidelity and the new capabilities in Unreal Engine. Specifically, we just had that uh, Matrix thing, which apparently is better than the movie, and before that, we had the Valley of the Anxious. So if you want to go ahead and check it out, Unreal Engine 5 is currently available in early access, and this Valley of the Anxious demonstration was really impressive. It showed case some of the capabilities of it you can go ahead and download it thing is it was like 70 gigabytes in size it shows you how to create a triple a style game the graphics required behind it and it showcases the new functionality coming in unreal engine 5 this exciting new stuff such as nanites and lumen uh, just really simple version nanite allows you to use basically unlimited polygon models and unreal engine takes care of things like lod's for you uh, lumens is a global uh, a, a global dynamic illumination system basically you can create direct lights in the scenes, dynamic lights, whatever, and you're going to get really cool ray trace global illuminations all taken care of for you, again, by Unreal Engine. So uh, this demo, this Valley of the Anxious, really showcased what it is capable of, but it was massive. So if you just wanted to learn the new features and functionality in Unreal Engine 5, it wasn't really right for you. That was more of a showcase of the capabilities, like the wow, look how pretty these graphics are. But if you want to learn Unreal Engine 5, well, we have a much better demo. So yesterday, uh, Epic Games launched Stack Obot. Now, this is a vertical slice of gameplay. Basically, it is a full, complete game. However, it doesn't um, it's not that big. So it's literally a slice of gameplay in which you control uh, robots collecting orbs in the world. But it's using Unreal Engine 5. So Unreal Engine 5 Early Access is required. It works on Windows and Mac. Now the interesting thing you're going to see here is this demonstrates things, uh, even if they're not really needed, such as Nanites and Lumens, but it's available on the Mac. So how does that work? Well, they just they don't seem to use that functionality on the Mac side of things. So if you're wondering, that is the case. However, the performance is really good. Uh, everything looks good on the Mac. It actually outperforms my Razer laptop by quite a big margin, to be honest. Uh, but no, land, no lumens or nanites. But you can grab the example, and it does show you Unreal Engine 5 in action. Speaking of Unreal Engine 5 in action, let us go check out the example. So here you can see it. Uh, it's sort of a sandbox for learning Unreal Engine 5. You got some instructions built in here to show you how to do stuff. Um, it's very modular, so you can jump into something, drop down, and see how, so for example, a pressured blueprint, um, a pleasure, a pleasure, a pleasure, a pressure plate right here. You can see how it is implemented. Uh, using uh, the Unreal Engine 5 way of doing things. And it's using things like advanced input, which is new to Unreal Engine 5. Um, so yeah, a complete vertical slice of gameplay in action. I'll show you the game right now. So let's go ahead and run this guy. And weird thing is the state is persisting. So what you're trying to do is grab orbs in the world. I've already grabbed a couple, so they're not here. Uh, but you kind of run around. And what you can do is print other copies yourself. So I'm going to go on this pressure plate. You're going to see it opens up that... that um, Piston, I guess we'd call it. So I'm going to go ahead and press F. And what I've just done is I've created a copy of me on there. So you can create various different controllers. So for example, right here, there is this air input fan. And I come over here and I can go ahead and create an instance of myself. And now what you're going to find is I go on over here and this plate will be active. So now if I jump in it, you're going to see I explode up. Uh, I'm propelled up by this fan. So if I come over here and I go boom, and I can kick in my jetpack, I may just make it. Yeah, here we go. And then there is an orb above me in this example somewhere. There it is. So now I just grabbed that orb. We also have other levels. I'll showcase this in a second because this is showcasing some of the uh, new partitioning functionality that's available. So over here you can see we have a completely different level. Same concept all over again. What you're doing is just running around grabbing these orbs. So it's not a super advanced game by any definition of the word. But that's actually the good thing here uh, because it makes it um, more self-contained, easier to learn, and so on. So anyways, this is the gameplay of Stack Over Robots. Now we're going to take a look at what it looks like in Unreal Engine 5. Um, one weird thing here, and this is a user error from my side, um, you, it's persisting the, the state of the game each time I run it. I'm not sure actually how to reset state. Uh, but anyways, not a big deal. I'm going to get rid of this so I get my start bar back. All right, so head on back over here. So we saw again, there's made up of a number of components, uh, 
and and so on that are reusable so you can want to come see how things interact they are available right there uh come on in here you can see the settings have moved around so unreal engine 5 is a lot like unreal engine 4 uh, but a lot of things have moved the ui is so much nicer in my opinion but your settings are now in the settings menu so your project settings for example are over here you're going to see plugins wise we are using the new uh advanced input like this guy right there we'll see that in a second when i look at the main controller bot um you've got bring up the so by the way control space brings up the uh the dock layout by the way you can you can um pin it if you so wish so come on down here uh what did they call it um yeah it was npc so i'm gonna come in here i'm gonna showcase how the, some of the data is being driven so you got stuff like this pre-configured game open up this data set right here let me bring on down over there so you'll notice ah it's not what i meant to do but oh well it'll work so look at the uh the properties of all these tiles that are being used. Come on in here, feature color. I can grab that guy. You can switch out the feature color and you can see it affects the entire level like so. Let's shut that guy down right there. You're gonna wanna take a look. They've got some other new features in here. So we got uh, windows. Uh, come on down and take a look at, oh, what is it called? World partition, so windows. World partition, and what you're gonna notice here is you've got this area. This chunk of our map is set up as a single partition, so it's going to load in. It gives you a way of kind of breaking down your scenes into uh, manageable chunks. What I'm gonna do is come on in here, select everything, and load them all in. And now what you're gonna notice is the whole map loads in. So you see all those other levels that we ran to before, they are now available as well. It makes it so you can handle bigger worlds and so on. That is one of the new features of Unreal Engine 5 as well. Now we also have um, Nanites, which is the kind of unlimited polygon budget stuff. So you can see here, we've got all these uh, rocks in the background. Well, some of these are, I believe, photogrammetry scanned uh, and like basically infinite polygon level rocks there. Whereas you've got other things like these trees are not. So what you can actually come in and go here uh, and we can go to nanite visualizations and we can actually see the nanites in action. So nanites are being used in this scene, even though realistically, it's not really a scene that needs nanites um, at all. So you can see the, the raw primitives in action, but you can see here nanites are being used. At the same time, so are lumens for lighting the scene. Uh, you can get that, you can see the lumens details via environment. I believe it was environment. Okay, why am I not finding it under environment? World, hmm, one sec. Nope, post-processing volumes. You see down here, you see the method, you got Lumen enabled right here, and then you've got some settings over Lumens available and the ray tracing and so on that are available. Now, both of those Nanites and Lumens are pretty um, uh, Unreal Engine taking care of you for you. So in some ways, those are set to free up and make life easier for creators. So it's not something that you should really have to get into. Just know that this particular example is using both Lumens and Nanites, even though, again, it probably is overkill and wasn't really required. Now, if you want to jump in here and kind of start taking a look and kind of figure out how to dig things apart, well, first thing, obviously, is you can come in and look at the individual components, drill down into those blueprints. So you got a lot of things here that are reusable. Again, control space, we could come on down here uh, go to blueprints like so let me unfilter up here and you're going to find various different pieces so game elements you want to see how doors and crates and so on all work and interact with each other drill into any one of these obviously you can get uh, the details of it right there the blueprints that are controlling things like so um, again when there are new unreal engine 5 features they are being showcased and used another probably starting point where you want to come in is to come in here go to blueprints uh, and then open up BP Bot. This is the blueprint controlling your actual character. Uh, like so. Okay, we got some... Why did you... Okay, that is really weird. I think I just found a bug. Because this one has got DPI scaling working just fine. But for some reason, the DPI scaling on this is awful and you can barely read it. Let me just reopen that blueprint. See if that happens again. So blueprint, open blueprint, BP Bot. Nope. Okay, I don't know what's going on there. So this is going to be really hard to read. I'm sorry. For some reason, uh, DPI scaling is not opening in this particular window. Uh, but you're going to see here, come on in. You're going to see in the event graph, 
These are all the things handling uh, this particular character and his movements. There is a character rig setup, some neat advanced functionality for that guy. Uh, for example, to automatically align his feet with the world when it's uneven ground and so on. Um, you've got some Niagara style animations in here. So let me just open up the jetpack, for example. And it should be showcasing it, but uh, there is a uh, Niagara jetpack particle here, right there. So you can open that one up in the Niagara editor. Go, open, here we go. Very simple particle system. But again, you can see how these things work in there. You can see the end result of the particle system in action. So you're getting a good showcase of all of the uh, features and functionality of Unreal Engine 5 in a much more teachable manner. Um, so this is, again, designed so that you come in and you can start you know, uh, adding your own entities into the world. So if you want you to create your own uh, additional things here. I could add in a crate into the world and so on. And as a designer can come in and start playing with the environment, whereas the programmers can come in and start drilling down into the blueprints, controlling things. Uh, you can see the new features and functionality of Unreal Engine in action. So for example, if I go back again to that very hard to read BP bot class, you're going to notice uh, if I come on down and we look at some of the input handling, like right here, you're seeing it's using the enhanced input actions in this particular case instead of the standard built-ins and so on. So if you've wanted to learn Unreal Engine 5 but were a little overwhelmed, uh, especially with the examples that were released, uh, this could be a definite good starting point. Uh, so it is, once again, called Stack O Bots, available um, over on the Unreal Engine Marketplace. Uh, you'll see, again, it is for Unreal Engine 5 only. A key thing to note, this is tagged as Unreal Engine only content, so you're only licensed to use this with Unreal Engine products. Obviously, it wouldn't be much use otherwise, but it's not like you can strip some of the assets out and use them in another engine. Uh, what you probably really wanna do, though, is check out this video. It's not particularly a tutorial, but it's a 30 plus minute walkthrough of the features and functionality used in this demo, and will give you really good insight into what is going on. So anyways, that is Stacklebots for Unreal Engine 5. A lot of exciting things about Unreal Engine 5. My big thing is I just like the user interface so much better. It, it just feels, when I go back to Unreal Engine 4, which I have to admit, always had a bit of a, not my favorite interface, I think is how we'd say it. It's, it's, it's always been a little bit cumbersome in some ways. Uh, Unreal Engine 5 really cleaned a lot of that up. It's much more aesthetically pleasing to work with. As you saw when we went to the high DPI scaling there, there are some issues for them to conquer still, but there's a reason why this is called early access. But if you wanted to learn it, Stacklebots, great option, free download. Go check it out. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.